This video will show a typical DMLS workflow. I'll start in Fusion. Here I am able to create a manufacturing model, an interim stage before the finished shape. The reason for this is that 3D printing in metal still requires finishing on important faces. The surface roughness of the as printed part can be likened to a casting. So I'm adding stock to some areas that require a sliding or mating fit with other components. Once I'm done making minor edits, I can use the NetFab button inside of Fusion to send my file to prepare for printing. Access to the NetFab button can be acquired by installing the NetFab app for Fusion from the Fusion App Store. It's free. Just go to the Fusion App Store and search NetFab. So long as you have an active license to NetFab, this button will allow you to export your designs straight to NetFab from Fusion 360. My design is now in NetFab and I'm ready to start prepping for additively manufacturing this part. Firstly, I'm going to select a machine on which to manufacture the part. I have my favorite machines already available to me in the My Machines tab. But if the machine I want isn't shown here, I can go to My Machines on the ribbon menu. Here I am able to edit the machines I see when I open the software. I can add to this list from an extensive library of 3D printers that come with the software. I can even edit the behavior of my NetFab so that it opens certain machines by default when I open the software. In this instance, I need a direct metal laser sintering machine with a medium size platform to print in aluminium. The machine loads and I am able to drag and drop my part into the machine workspace. From here, I still need to orient, place, and support my component on the platform before it is ready for printing. Options for doing these tasks are now displayed on the right hand side. These key calculations will be analyzing the triangles that the part is comprised of. Therefore, the less triangles, the less computing time. However, reducing triangles will also mean losing accuracy of the part. This is where having background model data can help. NetFab triangulated the model upon it entering the software, but it also kept the model data. This allows us to retessellate the model at any point, meaning we are able to calculate on a low resolution model and then turn the resolution back up when we come to print, saving us valuable calculation time and getting us to the machine faster. Once retessellated, the part needs to be oriented. Orientation is a key piece of the additive manufacturing puzzle and can affect the outcome of the print drastically. The orientation module allows you to search for different possible part orientations and choose based on supported area, support volume, print height, outbox volume, and center of gravity height. Now I have my part oriented, I can use the grab handles on the part to position it on the build plate. Supports must be added to overhanging areas on the part to prevent build failure. Opening the support editor gives me access to support generation features. Supports can be created manually with bars, polylines or volume. Alternatively, there are support scripts which can quickly populate the necessary supports based on some predefined rules and parameters. NetFab comes with default scripts which can be easily duplicated and edited to suit the individual conditions present in different printers with different materials, as is being shown here. Scripts contain many different parameters which makes them almost infinitely configurable. Wall type, hole spacing and size, as well as connection points between parts and platform can be established. 
And once you're happy with your script and how it applies to your parts, you can apply it to any other part geometry with just a click. Furthermore, supports that are applied to the part can be edited in place. For example, here I can angle the supports out and away from the part to minimize part cleanup after printing. Note that, with my script saved, I can execute it from outside of the support creation module at any time by going up to the ribbon and running it from there. I'm happy with how my supports look, so now it's almost time to print. Let's not forget to turn the resolution back up on my part first though. Once I've done this, I just need to refresh the attached support so that the supports align properly with the new higher fidelity geometry. As well as containing useful part prep tools, the context area to the right also has information about the machine settings that will be applied to this print. Here we can see that the machine tool manufacturer's default setting for my material choice is applied to this part. Others can also be chosen from a library of defaults. Custom settings may also be applied. Settings applied, it's time to slice the part. Toolpath visualization will allow us to view individual slices of the build before we send it to the machine. Here we can see the supports and the part slices layer by layer. They contain the hatches and contours that the laser will follow when sintering our component. Not every single layer is displayed, rather a layer interval, which can also be altered to see more or fewer layers visualized. Further analysis of our build can be done prior to printing by sending the build to the simulation utility for NetFab. In the utility, you can perform simulations for metal additive build processes, which allows you to predict stresses and distortion. This thermomechanical analysis is then used to tell the engineer about potential issues and failed builds before making that costly error on the machine. Here we see the part being built in layer intervals. It will even show what happens when the part is removed from the platform. The color mapping on the part is displaying displacement. This is one of many result types that can be shown. The AM engineer can use these to problem solve for that build and get to the root of any failures, such as recoder interference, support structure failure, or warpage that takes the part out of tolerance.